The 1977 World Series was the 74th edition of Major League Baseball's MLB Championship Series. The best of seven playoff was contested between the New York Yankees, champions of the American League AL, and defending American League champions, and the Los Angeles Dodgers, champions of the National League NL. The Yankees defeated the Dodgers, four games to two, to win the franchise's 21st World Series championship, their first since 1962, and the first under the ownership of George Steinbrenner. The series was played between October 11 and 18, broadcast on ABC. During this series, Reggie Jackson earned his nickname, Mr. October, for his heroics. Billy Martin won what would be his only World Series title as a manager after guiding the Yankees to a second straight pennant. Topic. Route to the series Topic. New York Yankees The New York Yankees returned to the Fall Classic after being swept by the Cincinnati Reds the previous year. In free agency, the Yankees signed slugging right fielder Reggie Jackson for US$2.96 million United States dollars $13,032,655 in current dollar terms over five years and Cincinnati Reds ace pitcher Don Goulet for US$2 million $8,805,848 in current dollar terms over six years. Two other key players were acquired by the Yankees through trades. Shortstop Bucky Dent was picked up from the Chicago White Sox for outfielder Oscar Gamble, pitcher Lamar Hoyt, and $200,000. And after only one year with the Oakland Athletics, pitcher Mike Torres was acquired in exchange for pitcher Doc Ellis and utilityman Marty Perez and Larry Murray. After a lackluster first half, the Yankees finished strong, winning 38 of their last 51 games edging both the Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles by two and a half games. In amongst the star-laden lineup was an emerging superstar in the left arm of Ron Guidry. Early in the season Guidry was moved from the bullpen into the starting rotation, finishing 16-7 with a 2.82 era. The Yankees advanced to the World Series after beating the Kansas City Royals in an exciting fifth and final 1977 American League Championship Series ALCS game, winning it with three runs in the top of the ninth on a string of singles and a costly error by George Brett. Topic. Los Angeles Dodgers The National League champion Los Angeles Dodgers were skippered by Tommy Lasorda, who was in his first full season as manager. The 1977 Dodgers became the first team to have four players hit 30 or more home runs in one season, as Steve Garvey hit 33, Reggie Smith hit 32, Ron Cey hit 30, and Dusty Baker hit 30. The pitching staff, which led the National League in era 3.22, were led by 20-game winner, Tommy John and closer Charlie Huff with 22 saves. The Dodgers won 22 of their first 26 games, winning the Western Division by 10 games over the Cincinnati Reds, then eliminated the Philadelphia Phillies in the 1977 National League Championship Series NLCS in four games. Topic. Series preview The matchup of the Yankees and the Dodgers harkened back to the World Series matchups between the two teams of the 1950s. Topic. Series statistics Summerill New York Yankees 4 versus NL Los Angeles Dodgers 2 Composite box score This World Series is notable for being one of the few six-game series in which the winning team was outscored. It happened previously in 1918 and 1959 and later in 1992, 1996, and 2003.
Seven game series winners were outscored in 1957, 1960, 1962, 1964, 1971, 1972, 1973, 1975, 1991, 1997, and 2002, equaled in 2016 and 2017. Topic: Matchups. Topic: Game One. The Dodgers scored twice in the top of the first inning when Davy Lopez walked and scored on a Bill Russell triple off Don Goulet. Ron C E Y made it two to zero on a sacrifice fly. In the bottom of the inning, the Yankees responded with consecutive two-out singles by Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, and Chris Chambliss, scoring Munson. In the top of the sixth, Steve Garvey beat out a bunt and, with one out, attempted to score from first on a hit and run single to center field by Glenn Burke. Mickey Rivers, who did not possess a strong throwing arm, threw home. Replays showed Garvey clearly beat the tag but he was called out at the plate. The Yankees tied it in their half of the sixth when Willie Randolph hit a home run off Don Sutton. The Yankees took the lead in the eighth when Munson doubled home Randolph. Later in the inning, the Yankees loaded the bases with one out, but Dodger reliever Elias Sosa struck out Lou Piniella and retired Bucky Dent on a force out to end the threat. The Dodgers tied it at 3 3 in the ninth. Dusty Baker led off with a single and was almost picked off first when pinch hitter Manny Mota failed on a bunt attempt. Moda flied out, but Steve Yeager walked and pinch hitter Lee Lacey drove Baker home with a single. In extra innings, the Yankees got their leadoff hitters on in both the 10th and 11th innings, but did not score due to failure to lay down sacrifice bunts. Finally, in the 12th, Randolph led off and doubled and Munson was walked intentionally. Yankee manager Billy Martin at first wanted Paul Blair, the next hitter, to try to sacrifice again, but after two failed attempts, Martin had Blair hit away and Blair singled home Randolph with the game winner. 1977 Al Cy Young Award winner Sparky Lyle took the win in Game 1 and, coupled with his wins in Games 4 and 5 of the 1977 ALCS, to this day is the only pitcher ever to win three consecutive decisions in a single postseason. Topic. Game 2 With aces Ron Guidry and Mike Torres having both pitched in Game 5 of the ALCS, Billy Martin was forced to use a sore-shouldered catfish hunter in Game 2. The Dodgers hit three homers in the first three innings off Hunter, as Ron Cey hit a two-run home run in the first, Steve Yeager a home run in the second, and Reggie Smith a two-run home run in the third. Steve Garvey hit a home run in the ninth off of Sparky Lyle. Burt Hooten pitched a five-hit complete game, allowing only run one in the fourth on Reggie Jackson's ground ball double play after Willie Randolph and Thurman Munson led off the inning with back-to-back -back singles. Hooten made amends for his meltdown in Game 3 of the 1977 NLCS. About an hour before the first pitch, a fire had started in Public School 3, an abandoned elementary school a few blocks east of Yankee Stadium. During the game, ABC cut to a helicopter camera for an overhead view of Yankee Stadium and the surrounding neighborhood, catching the fire. Howard Cosell intoned, There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Bronx is burning. This became the title for a book and television miniseries focusing on the year 1977 in New York City. Topic. Game 3 The Yankees struck for three runs in the first off Tommy John. Mickey Rivers led off with a bloop double to right, his first hit of the series, and scored on a harder hit Thurman Munson double to right. Reggie Jackson singled to left to score Munson and went to second when Dodger left fielder Dusty Baker overran the ball. Lou Piniella then scored Jackson on an RBI single up the middle to make it 3-0. Baker atoned for his first inning error by connecting for a three-run homer in the third off Yankee starter Mike Torres. 
The Yankees regained the lead with single runs in the fourth and fifth on an RBI groundout by Rivers, who finished the game with three hits, including two doubles, and an RBI single by Chris Chambliss. Torres settled into a groove after Baker's home run, shutting out the Dodgers for the rest of the way. Torres finished with nine strikeouts in the complete game win. Topic. National Anthem Before the game, Linda Ronstadt sang the National Anthem, standing alone in center field wearing jeans and a Dodgers warm-up jacket. The attire drew much media attention afterwards. The performance itself was later ranked by the Washington Examiner as the second best national anthem rendition at a sporting event. According to the magazine, it was such a hit Ronstadt wore a similar satin jacket, along with short shorts, knee pads and roller skates, on the cover of her 1978 album, Living in the USA. Topic. Game 4 With Don Sutton needing another day of rest, Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda started left-hander Doug Rao to counter the Yankees' left-handed power. Rao was rusty, having only pitched in relief in one game of the 1977 NLCS. After a relatively easy first inning, Reggie Jackson greeted Rao with a leadoff double in the second. Lou Piniella singled Jackson home with the first run and was doubled to third by Chris Chambliss. Lasorda then pulled Rao in favor of Rick Roden, resulting in a heated argument between Lasorda and Rao on the mound. The Yankees scored two more runs in the inning on an RBI groundout by Greg Nettles and an RBI single by Bucky Dent. The Dodgers pushed across two in the third. Roden, a good hitting pitcher, hit a ground rule double to left and Davy Lopez followed with a two-run homer off Yankee starter Ron Guidry. The Dodgers scored nothing else off Guidry, as he settled down and pitched a four-hit complete game. The Dodgers almost tied the game in the fourth when Ron Cey sent a drive to deep left that Lou Piniella leapt up and caught, robbing him of a home run. Jackson ended the scoring with an opposite field home run off Roden in the sixth. Topic. Game 5 Needing a win to send the series back to New York, the Dodgers took out their frustrations in Game 5 on Don Goulet. Davey Lopez led off the first with a triple and came home when Bill Russell singled. In the fourth, the Dodgers broke the game open on an RBI single by Dusty Baker and a three-run homer by Steve Yeager. Baker added another RBI single in the fifth, Lee Lacey singled home a run, and Yeager batted in another run with a sacrifice fly. Reggie Smith completed the rally with a two-run homer in the sixth. The Yankees pushed across two runs each in the seventh and eighth, the two runs in the eighth coming on back-to-back -back homers by Thurman Munson and Reggie Jackson. Nevertheless, Dodger starting pitcher Don Sutton pitched a complete game for the win. Jackson's shot in the eighth came on the first pitch from Sutton, setting the stage for a memorable finale. Topic. Game 6 Game 6 shifted the series back to New York, where 56,407 fans filled Yankee Stadium. Steve Garvey put the Dodgers on the board first with a two out, two run triple in the first off Mike Torres. The Yankees came back and tied it in the second on a Chris Chambliss two-run homer after Reggie Jackson walked on four pitches. Reggie Smith put the Dodgers up 3-2 in the third with his third homer of the series. Jackson hit a two-run homer in the fourth on the first pitch he saw from starter Burt Hooten to give the Yankees the lead. Lou Piniella made it 5-3 by adding a sacrifice fly. Once again, in the fifth with a man on, Jackson connected on the first pitch off Elias Sosa to make the score 7-3. In the eighth, Jackson strode to the plate, amid the chants of, Reg GIE, Reg GIE, Reg GIE, and drove the first Charlie Huff knuckleball he saw 475 feet, 145 meters, into the stands, becoming the first player to hit three home runs in a World Series game since Babe Ruth in 1926 and 1928. The score was now 8-3.
with his Game 5 first pitch homer in the eighth and his four-pitch walk in the second inning of Game 6, Jackson homered on his last four swings of the bat in the series, each off a different Dodger pitcher. Indeed, the last eight pitches delivered to Jackson in the series were all productive for the Yankees. The four-pitch walk in the second inning allowed him to score on the Chambliss homer. The Dodgers pushed across a run in the ninth, but Torres pitched his second complete game win of the series. Topic. Broadcasting This was the first World Series televised by the ABC Network since 1949, and the first since television of the series started in 1947 not to be televised, at least in part, by rival network NBC. NBC had been the exclusive television network of the series from 1950 to 1976, and had covered that year's Yankees Royals and Dodgers Phillies playoff series that year. As was customary at the time, the competing team's local flagship stations WPIX in New York and KTTV in Los Angeles were allowed to air a simulcast of ABC's national broadcast. It was also the first time that the participating team's local announcers were not featured during game play on the network telecast, though the Yankees' Bill White and the Dodgers' Ross Porter did pre-game TV features and White handled the post-game celebration in the Yankee clubhouse after they clinched the title. White and Porter also split the CBS radio play-by-play -play for the series. Topic. Impact and aftermath This World Series cemented Jackson's legacy as a postseason performer, giving him the nickname, Mr. October. Twenty-four years later a similar nickname would be given to another Yankee, shortstop Derek Jeter, after a walk-off home run in Game 4 of the 2001 World Series by which point the game had gone past midnight into November. Jackson won the World Series Most Valuable Player Award and Babe Ruth Award. Lyle won the All Cy Young Award. Nettles and Garvey both won Gold Glove Awards. The Yankees and Dodgers met again in the 1978 and 1981 World Series. Los Angeles became the first metropolitan area to host a World Series and a Super Bowl in the same calendar year. Super Bowl XI was played January 9, 1977 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Topic. In popular culture The 1977 New York Yankees is one of the key plot points, along with The Son of Sam and the New York City Blackout of 1977, in the movie Summer of Sam directed by Yankees fan Spike Lee. In the film Basketball, Reggie Jackson is shown hitting his third home run of the game. The 1977 Yankees season, including the World Series, is one of the subjects of Jonathan Mahler's 2005 nonfiction book Ladies and Gentlemen, The Bronx is Burning, which was subsequently adapted into the 2007 ESPN miniseries The Bronx is Burning. After the 1977 World Series, Melissa Ludke, a reporter for Sports Illustrated, sued MLB Commissioner Bowie Kuhn for having been denied access to the Yankees' clubhouse during the series, asserting that her 14th Amendment right was violated. Ludke won her case. The 1977 television movie Murder at the World Series centered around a fictionalized version of this year's fall classic, in which the Houston Astros were playing the Oakland Athletics. At the time, it had been three years since the A's last appeared in a World Series, and would be 11 years until their next appearance. The Astros did not make the playoffs until 1980, win their first pennant until 2005, or their first championship until 2017. Topic. Notes Topic. See also 1977 Japan Series